Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Beard Joe? Hey there, Jared. Dude, I just, every time I see that beard, I have to like, it stops me in my tracks. It's getting its own life. Yeah. Well, anyway, the main reason we're here is not Joe Courtney's beard. It's Brian O'Connell. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Uh, We're good. I'm, I'm glad to have you on the podcast, get to talk about training a little bit and, and uh, how things are going for you. So I am going to give it to you right off the bat, man. Uh, what do you do for a living? How do you train? Uh, and just give us a little bit of a background. Yeah, sure. So um, I work for a, a corporation. I won't name them, but it's a big financial company here in Delaware. We're um, kind of the credit card comp- capital of the world. So you can give you a heads up or an idea of what I, who I work for. But I, um, I do reporting and analytics for them. And uh, kind of tell the story of what they do uh, with their different divisions and departments. So high level, that's what I do. Um, training, uh, I'm in my garage now, <laughs> as I'm guessing most people are. Yeah. Um, I was uh, probably until about four years ago, there was no garage or gym workouts for me. I've always been an endurance athlete. So uh, mountain biking, cross country, well, cross country in high school, but running, Um, that kind of stuff. And, um, probably about four years ago, my wife is a huge gym rat and she was doing beach body stuff. And, um, I was just, pants weren't fitting well. I wasn't feeling real healthy or feeling good about myself. And, um, she kind of cajoled me in like, why don't you see if you can do it? And I'm like, I, I can definitely do this. This is not hard. And so for the next two years, I worked out with her every day in our basement, um, doing beach body stuff. And, um, probably about, uh, almost two years ago in July, it would have been two years in July, we went to a CrossFit gym locally. Um, she was she wanted to check it out. I wasn't super into it, but um, I, you know, I'm always up to try something new and I thought maybe I could learn some things. And I did. Um, I learned a lot of Olympic lifting stuff. The gym we ended up going to that she still goes to um, was less CrossFit, more kind of like fitness and Olympic lifting under a CrossFit name. Um, so we would do the open and we'd do that kind of stuff, but, um, we were learning pretty good techniques and things like that. And January, I, um, so last year I picked up running Spartan races and stuff and really got into it. And I could see the CrossFit was not really, it was only getting me to a certain point, but it was also causing a lot of, um, damage. It was, you know, I had a lot of injuries in the last year and a half. Um, some, pretty major injuries, um, here and there too. Uh, and so I needed to find a way to continue doing the strength work, but also add, continue to add back in that endurance. Cause with CrossFit, you know, they would, they would, uh, program like a mile run and people would be moaning and groaning. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> that's, I, you know, I routinely was running, you know, five to seven miles at a shot just as training runs, just doing trail. I do trail runs mostly I don't like running on pavement but um so I could kind of see the writing on the wall that I I can either keep getting stronger and probably have some injuries um but have it be counterproductive to the Spartan racing that I'd like to do or I can find something else and actually one of the guys that's in our community um Eric um Eric VDP is his name on Facebook it's a vendor pool but he told me he's like have you checked out garage gym athlete because we were both looking he's he goes to the same crossfit gym and he said have you looked at garage gym athlete and i'm like no i don't know what you're talking about so he forwarded it to me and i looked at it and i started kind of looking at the meet yourself saturdays and um, some of the programming and i'm like this 
this kind of fits in more with what I was thinking about doing. Uh, so in January, I um, told my box guy, hey, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm just going to go work out at the Y because <laughs> I didn't have any equipment. I had no gym to work out in. I had no garage. I have a garage, but it was just full of kids' bikes and toys and, uh, you know, the normal stuff. Um, so I was going to the Y and I was doing the programming at the Y getting weird looks, doing some of the stuff, you know, walking around, they had like a functional <laughs> fitness room with, uh, <laughs> they had like a, they had a big globo gym area with all the machines. And then they had another functional fitness area, which was pretty nicely set up with AstroTurf and a couple racks and a big old jungle gym thing. And so it was a nice setup, but I'd be walking through the, walking through the room with, you know, the overhead dumbbell or a barbell carry and everybody's looking at me weird and you know people hanging out on the rowers not actually using them and I'm like hey can you move and so it wasn't ideal but it was getting the job done and then in March COVID hit and um, uh, thankfully her box the the gym we used to go to my wife still goes there um, the owner allowed us to kind of rent out equipment so we had her weights we had a couple kettlebells um and then i just started looking and started finding stuff i i found a barbell for 50 bucks i had to drive you know an hour up into I, we live near philly so i had to drive up up near philly to grab it and so did that got an air bike or a assault bike um got all kinds of stuff um and i've built some stuff um as far as the plyo box for the plans that you had um built our plyo box for that actually it's we're sitting on it the phone is sitting on it right now um uh, i built a kettlebell and we had some other stuff so so for, and then my wife because she wasn't getting to do her regular workouts was like i think we should get a rack that's awesome <laughs> and i was like oh you're probably right we probably should get a rack <laughs> so we started and i was just i was just gonna go cheap because i'm like i don't want her shutting it down so she's like no get get the good stuff if you're going to be working out here all the time get the good stuff and so we went and got a rogue foldable rack and um we ordered a couple dumbbell uh, barbells I always mix the two we, we bought a whole set of plates um which finally came in <laughs> about a week ago it took them two months but um so i've literally been working out every day in the garage um you know, I have all the different distances marked out in my neighborhood now. Um, I'm sure some of my neighbors probably think I'm nuts. Some of the stuff they see me walking by doing, carrying a sandbag or uh, I, I got a vest. And so I've been doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, just being that weird guy that does weird things in the neighborhood. That's impressive. You were able to get all of your stuff this year yeah. while everything was happening crazily. So so you did the programming first and then you decided to, to, to work out at home. So that's almost the, the opposite of what happens. Yeah. So that's why I was at the Y they had all the stuff they had, you know, a whole, the whole breadth of kettlebells and, you know, dumbbells and they had barbells and stuff. And, um, I didn't really have a big problem working out there. I liked working out there. Um, one of the things, one of my goals this year was to run, uh, do a triple trifecta in Spartan. So three, three sets of the three different distances i did two last year so nine and races. I won't, yeah nine races yeah. well i had 13 races scheduled so wow. <laughs> zero zero have happened so far uh so it's gonna be a busy last six months of this year um to get that goal in but i, I think it's still doable um and then i also wanted to try a couple triathlons locally just like sprint ones so i uh, originally i went to the y to get swimming in um i hadn't swam for any distance since probably high school. I swam competitively all through middle and high school. Um, I did three sports a year. So I was always doing stuff every season. Um, but I had not swam for any distance of time for a long time. Um, so I, January, I started three days, four days a week. I was swimming um, at the different locations here in Delaware. Um, there's one right near my work where I would literally just go on lunch hour. I just go swim for 20 minutes, hop out, get showered, get dressed and get back to work. Um, and that swimming was, it's, it's probably not feasible for garage, for garage gym training, but man, nothing was, uh, I was in my head a lot in that pool, you know, I'm just swimming. Oh, I can see the bottom of the pool. What am I going to do when the water's murky and I can't see anything and just 
nonstop <clears throat> wheels spinning while I was trying to trying to get into that. But the more I did it, I found the more that I could kind of calm myself down and, and get rid of that anxiety and just say it just <clears throat> just do one stroke, just do the next stroke. And sometimes I would literally just count the strokes per length to get out of my head and just go 16, 17, hit the wall and then turn around and it's one, two. Um, so it, I do miss the why for that, but I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than just rolling out of bed, going out in the garage, turning on the, the speaker out here and just cranking it up and just, I can listen to whatever I want to do. The kids can come out, my, my girls. So I have two boys and two girls um, from ages uh, eight up to 15. The boys don't come out because they're sleeping, but um, my one, my youngest daughter is she, as soon as she hears me get up, she's up. And so she'll literally just sit on the stairs or she'll sit on one of the rack stringers and just, just, just be here while I'm working out. So I, I feel pretty privileged that they get to see, cause they know mom and dad work out all the time. Cause we used to always go to the gym mm -hmm. and then we would come home. So they know we're working out and sometimes they would come with us to the box and work out or see us work out, but they're seeing every day consistent. Um, it goes back to, I'm, I'm listening to your book right now. And, um, one of the things that hit me was continuous daily pursuit. They're seeing that continuous daily pursuit. And I'm hoping that some of that rubs off on them. Um, so that in their lives, you know, it's just, just a little bit every day, just keep moving every day, keep doing it. So I don't know uh, if I'm answering the questions or if I'm no, you're doing awesome, man. You're Going to field. <laughs> you're, you're, you're telling the story, which is the really my my main job in, in these interviews is making sure that uh, I pull everything out of whoever yeah. we're talking to. But I, I love your your journey. I think going from endurance, you know, CrossFit, beach body, um, and then working yourself into, you know, our programming and uh, still fitting in, like you have a pretty aggressive schedule. You know, I think, yeah, uh, yeah I know COVID uh, hit or whatever, but I think, <laughs> I think that you're, you're uh, participating at a pretty high level. And I know, you know, you're talking about that swimming. My buddy and I, when my old house, I live pretty close to a lake. And so we, we, I, I am not, I mean, I'm a fine swimmer, but like never competitive or anything like that. And yeah. we decided to throw that into a workout just to see, <laughs> and, but because it was like, you know, I think we did like a bunch of kettlebell swings and then it was like, I think I was about a mile from a place where we could easily enter to swim. So there was like, so you had to run. do all this stuff, run, swim. And we had the swim planned out. We were going to swim basically from one side to the other side uh, because it was this really short, looked short, you know, it's always deceiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> we both got like halfway and like, I started treading water and I just looked at him. I was like, yeah, I'll probably die if we keep going. So I'm going to go back. And yeah. uh, it, I know, I was like, I know it's the same distance, but I'm going to have to go all the way there and all the way back if I do this. And I'm just, I'm not going to make it. And he's like, dude, I, I'm so glad you said something. He's like, I thought I was going to go on like <laughs> hundred meters ago. And uh, so yeah, swimming is, is brutal. Also why we don't program it. I don't, uh, I don't want anybody to have to find that, uh, yeah. that swimming pool or whatever, but that that's awesome, yeah. man. So you haven't been able to, to participate in any um, Spartan races. Have you been doing anything aside from the programming to try and stay like, you know, ready for those things? Yeah. So I've been dealing with um, plantar fasciitis in my foot. So in a way it's kind of like God was like, Hey, you need a rest. So there's nothing you could do anyway. So I haven't been doing a lot of extra running. Normally I would probably run um, three to four times a week. Uh, between three to seven miles, somewhere around there. Um, and I also ride. I know you're into bikes. Like I have my, my bike, my bikes are all behind me. Um, a lot of Thursdays and Sundays, I just ride. Like I'll do a, uh, I know Trampus. So we're in a group, the, the crazy guys that set up the Murph trying to be like you and do Murph <laughs> every weekend. Um, so I'm in a group with those guys and he's always zone two, zone two. And I'm like, well, I could zone two for five hours on a bike. So like I've been doing a couple hours on Thursdays and Sundays where I'll just take off and road ride for a while and just, just take it easy and just kind of drive ride around and take in the sights. Um, so that's, I, I've been trying to keep my uh, heart and lungs for that nonstop just by doing that. You know, once that, once the foot heals, then I'll get back to probably running trails more. But. And so what are, um, how has the transition been? Because you've been in a lot of different, um, I mean, I would just say fitness has been a part of your life, which is awesome, but you, yeah. you know, you just hit different areas. Uh, yeah. how have you liked 
because you know endurance athletes who only do endurance stuff that's generally because that's what they like it's the same with strength right. athletes like strength athletes don't want to go run a mile because they'd rather be under a barbell uh so right. how's that transition been for you from coming from an endurance athlete and fitting in a lot more strength work than normal yeah so i'm not crazy about working out in the gym i never have been that's why i never did it um but over the last few years, I've learned so much from people in gyms and friends that I've made. And I've kind of come to the realization that um, it, it, I hate to be like the homer for your book, but it really is. You need to get comfortable doing things you don't like to do. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those things I tell my kids all the time. Like most of your growth comes when you step outside of the things you know you can do the things you're good at, the things you like. Um, and early on when I was doing the beach body stuff and then I would go hit the trail on the mountain bike and I would notice that I had much more explosive, you know, I had that, that explosive power would come out much more. I'm still a bean pole, but it would, when I'm going up a hill, I could feel it. Like this used to wipe me out and I'd have to spin for the next five minutes to catch up and be all right, where now I'm just continuing to go. So then I started seeing the benefit of it. And so while I might not love it, um, it, it, it's eating my vegetables. I know it's good for me and I know it's working. Um, since I've come over, I've seen all of my stuff except for deadlift because I didn't have enough weights. I've had all my lifts go up like the, I don't have a long history of, of lifts, but I did have all my Wattify stuff from the box. So I had a history over the last two years of here's what I have been lifting and all of it went up. So it, it, this programming works. Um, I think part of the, my problem is rest. Um, if there's a, if there's a wad listed, I was doing it. I, I, I mean, my wife still does it. She does seven days a week. She goes to the box seven days a week and I would go with her and then I would run. And that's how I was kind of beating myself into the ground. Um, I think the beauty of this programming is that it's not, it's so varied. I know CrossFit's thing is varied movements, um, but I think, I think the garage gym athlete program actually is even more varied. I mean, there's movements that you guys do that I've, I've never done. And like, I've pulled in some of my buddies to do the meet yourself Saturday stuff. And they're like, why are we doing this? I'm like, I don't know, just do it. <laughs> it's good for you. Just do it. And so like we had, you know, and my buddy, my one buddy is like, he's a beast. And he, we did the, the plate one where you had the one plate. And you were carrying it for an hour. Oh, yeah. or you, old McDonald. You did the, yeah, yeah, old McDonald. You did the plate pinch and then you carried it. And then you did the calisthenics in the middle, which was like, he's like, all right, we can do this part. And we just kind of rocked out like 10 rounds of that. Um, but the other parts, he's like, he picked the 45. <laughs> Bad move. And I, was, and I told him, I said, dude, you, you should probably, I said, I'm doing a, I forget what I did. I think I did 25. I said, I'm doing a 25. I couldn't physically hold a 45. So but he's bigger than me. He's like, He's like, it's only right I do 45. I'm like, mm, it'd be okay if you do 25, but he didn't. He was in halfway through, we're carrying it, and he's going, that was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> but just those varied movements, and it's just fun because it's different. Um, it's, it doesn't get stale. For me, once it gets stale, I'm so bored. And once I get bored, I get just, I space out, and I don't, I just don't focus well, and I don't do a good job of basically doing the work. So, that variety really keeps me coming back for it. So, well, tell me about this uh, doing the same workout every Saturday for a year. And if we're talking yeah. about, about boredom, so uh, tell me a little bit more about this journey and how you got, um, say, in, entangled in, in such a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty prolific. It's it's going to be. Uh, I've done three so far. Uh, so here's the funny part: I had never done Murph. Um, I was a pitcher in high school. I blew out my shoulder. And I had a, a slap lesion for 20 years. I just never got it fixed. And I was playing um, church softball because I still love to play. But I couldn't make the throw from short. And it was starting to kill me throwing it from second. And um, so when I started doing CrossFit, beach body, I was fine. But when I started doing CrossFit, heavier weights, more stuff, I was starting to feel it in that shoulder. And so I finally got um, surgery in 2018. In December, I got surgery. And uh, the funny thing was I worked out right up to it. And then four days later, I was right back to it. Just one arm kettlebells, one arm dumbbells. I was doing everything one arm for the next three months. So I never lost any of my fitness. I could still do box jumps. I could do all that stuff. Um, but, I, but by the time Murph came around, my arm was not ready to do even a half Murph. 
So that first year I never got to do it. And then last year, honestly, I was so beat down from just going nonstop at CrossFit. We were down at the beach and my wife's like, you want to go with us? They were going to a CrossFit gym down there. And I said, uh, no, nah, she's going to sleep. <laughs> and so I did, I just slept through it. And I was like, so I've never actually had done Murph until this, um, Memorial day weekend. We, when we did it the first time, um, and it was awful when we finished, I did it. I did the whole thing. I did it strict. I didn't do it vested. Um, but it was awful. I mean, I was in zone five for 48 minutes or 47 or whatever it was the whole time I was in zone yeah. five, um, <laughs> completely redlined the whole time. And, and I'm like, and then, so then, uh, I know, you know, Chris, Chris Morgan and him and Trampus and Chris Jung started, uh, started, we should do it every day. Like, like Jared did we, or every weekend, like Jared did, we should do it. I'm like, nah, I don't think we're on Jared's level. I don't think we should do that. <laughs> and, um, and we just started talking through it and, uh, camaraderie just started building in this group about it and we were just kind of it, it wasn't like a, you know you're a wimp or you're a wuss or it was it was very positive um that's the other thing about this uh garage gym athlete community uh, the positivity um there's not a whole lot of look at me look how great i am there's a whole lot of man this was hard i'm so glad i made it through you guys can do it too and it was a lot of that in that group and i thought i I still wasn't in. I'm like, I'm not doing this. This is, I'm just going to get injured. And, um, when we started talking through and then you guys, I guess Trampus reached out to you or you heard about it. And then you guys, um, said something on the podcast and, um, it, it kind of helped me to get out of the PR mindset of, you know, if I don't beat myself every week, it, this is going to be for naught and kind of get more of a, this is a journey to get better, to get stronger, to be able to, to take on more. Um, and kind of demystify the whole, the, the, the workout, to be honest with you. I mean, now that I've done it three times, I've done it faster every single time and I'm looking at, I'm such a nerd. I have a Garmin. So I like, and, and because I'm in reporting, I've taken down all my stuff. So like I have every heart rate zone, the percentages of time spent in it, how long it took me to do the calisthenics, how long it took me to do the first and second mile. Is it a positive split? Is it a negative split? Um, I just want to look at it and see how it works. And so the first three weeks, red line first week, second week, it was half and half zone four, zone five. Third week, it was half and half zone five, zone three. And the zone fives were just the runs. So I was in zone three, the entire calisthenics, which was odd. And um, I looked at the time. I think I was about a minute slower on the calisthenics than uh, the week before but I still finished three seconds faster. So oh, nice. it's weird. Um, I, I am having a little bit of discomfort in my elbow. <laughs> so I might be doing like a zone two or a uh, modified ring row or something, you know. Um, but I think part of this process is understanding and being realistic um, that just sometimes it's not going to be, you know, your all out effort. Uh, it's not going to be the vested fastest thing you've ever done you know, it's just a matter of just getting it done. So I think it's more doable. Um, I haven't been doing the meet yourself Saturdays, so that's kind of a bummer, but <laughs> that, that's the biggest thing I miss when I do yeah. these year long yeah. Murphs is like, I, because some of them, yeah. some of them I'm like, I don't know, I'm glad I'm not doing that one. Uh, like the lunging but, one. <laughs> yes. But there are <laughs> the others where I'm lunges. like, man, I would rather be doing what the ruck than, than Murph or something like right. that. Yeah, yeah. Like I like Sally's revenge. That one's I, I didn't find that one to be all that awful, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, when we program Broken Arrow, there's a Murph in it. That so one's you, bad. You, yeah. you could count it if you uh, if you'd rather do the Meet Yourself Saturday. Uh, I might do that because I, I that one was t that was tough. Um, I did that one at the Y, and then I got on my road bike and I rode basically rode around the area to get the uh, ten miles or whatever in, um, and it was cold and windy because I think it was in February, if I remember correctly, February or March. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> Joe. Joe, Joe doesn't play that game. Joe doesn't, doesn't play that game. <laughs> well, I ride year round, so I like I have all the. That's the thing. I have the gear, so I've ridden, uh, you know, eight degrees, ten degrees. I've ridden in very I've, where I, my water bottle is frozen solid. I've literally, nice. you know, ridden like that. So, but so you've uh, you've really ramped up this uh, becoming a garage gym athlete, and what I mean by that is actually doing it in your garage in a relatively short time mm -hmm. period. Uh, so. So far, how do you like training in your garage versus everything else you've done? There's definitely pros and cons. 
I like being able to set my own hours. Like I haven't worked out today because of things that are usually I'm first thing in the morning. I'm up around six o'clock. I get it done, get shower, get dressed. And then I go to work. We're all at home. So I just go in my office. But um, the good thing is because I'm in my, I'm in my garage working out because my schedule changed um, for the next couple of weeks, I could just do it in the afternoon without having to make a bunch of changes, worry about who's watching the kids, who's doing this. Um, the upfront cost was expensive, but it's, I mean, we were paying 150 bucks a month per person for the, the CrossFit gym. So, I mean, that the amount of money that I've spent on equipment, will that's a year's worth of what we would have done anyway. And now I have this forever. I mean, it's, I don't see me ever being able, being able to break this stuff. <laughs> um, I, so I like being able to set my own hours. I like being able to do what I want to do. Um, part of what I didn't like about going to the gym where there was coaches was sometimes I'd have a coach telling me stuff and I'm looking at them going, I know I know more than you. And that's not a good thing because I'm not a seasoned gym athlete. I am an athlete. I've, I've played sports my whole life, um, racing mountain bikes and stuff and all that. But so part of that was that I had a hard time with that being told, no, you should do it this way. And I'm like, well, I know my body and I know what I can and can't do or have somebody go, you should go heavier with that weight. And I'm like, no, I know where I'm at. So I think part of, part of, for me is I kind of intuitively know how I'm feeling. I know where I'm at in my training or how my body's feeling. And I don't want people bothering me, telling me what I can and can't do uh, when I go to work out. So I, I guess I'm kind of independent in that way. So being in the garage, works perfect. Um, I don't have to listen to any garbage music I don't like. <laughs> I mean, just, just the small side pieces like that. Um, you know, I can run in my neighborhood. I can be outside. So a lot of times I'll just we'll move the cars up and I'll take mats out and I'll do some of the barbell stuff out on the driveway. So I'm still outside. Um, so it's just, I think just the flexibility of it and just kind of being in control um, of doing it is, is probably what I like the most about it. That's awesome. Now you have done a lot of different things and, uh, push yourself on, on many occasions, but, uh, if you had to pick one, what's the hardest workout you've ever done? Yeah. So I thought about that. So it would either be, it's not really a workout. I ran a marathon in 08. That was probably the hardest physical thing I've ever done. Um, if it was just a workout, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the CrossFit open workouts. Um, 2019 there was one called 19.5 and it was uh thrusters and, and uh chest to bar pull-ups and it was just a rep scheme of it was ridiculous it was like 30 27 21 15 9 and it was brutal and i was i wasn't even doing full chest to, chest to bar because um <clears throat> i was still recovering from my shoulder surgery so i was doing jumping pull-ups so it should have been easier, but it, I thought I was going to die <laughs> that first round of 30 thrusters. Sounds and brutal. I think it was, yeah, I think it was 95 pound thrusters and I only weigh like 155 pounds. So doing a 95 pound thruster over and over again, like that was, I think that's probably one of the few times where I was like, I wonder if I could sneak out of this building and nobody would notice I had left. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think, wanted to leave. <laughs> I think thrusters, thrusters and, and pull-ups is like, that's like the CrossFit formula for, yeah. for yeah. awfulness. And, uh, it, it is awful. I, I ended up in the hospital from um, a workout called Daniel and it's something similar where you run like a 400 meter, you do 21, I think it's 21, 15, nine of thrusters and pull-ups. And, um, I don't know if I, I was doing butterfly pull-ups that day. And so between the thrusters and the pull-ups, by the time I got done, I ended up, I had a bulging disc in my neck. Oh. Like in my C5, C6, and I ended up in the ER that after that morning and afternoon, getting a CAT scan and all this other stuff because they were worried about um, brain hemorrhaging. <laughs> so when I say I had some injury, I had some pretty bad injuries. I hurt my back um, doing deadlifts. Uh, just, just doing. That's the other thing. Like for me, um, when I'm around other people, um, I don't mean to be, but I'm trying to keep up with other people. And a lot of times that leads to you doing things that probably aren't as safe as they should be or yep. doing more weight than you should be doing. Um, I've learned the hard way that if you're, if you're not sure about the weight, there's nothing wrong with going a little bit lighter than the prescribed weight. Um, and my buddy's always like, you should do more. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good right here. This is what I'm going to do. So that's one of the hard lessons that I've learned 
in the last few years from working out in the gym is um, know know who you are, <laughs> know your ability. It's okay to str- to try to hit a stretch goal a little bit, but don't don't be crazy about it because you know you're gonna pay the price for it. Yeah, the the double edged sword of a training partner. They can push you, but they can also push you. <laughs> yeah, push you a little too hard. Yeah. Now. Yeah. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? So the, the funny thing is the whole thing we were talking about with the Murph, um, doing it 52 two weeks in a row or 53. I guess it's 53 because we have to do it again next Memorial Day, right? Um, you could take it off if you wanted to. I for mean, me, uh, mental toughness <laughs> is um, – <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, there's couple, there's a couple little things I do for mental toughness. One of them, I take cold showers all the time. Um, like I don't do like warm and then cold. I do completely cold the whole time um, <clears throat> because they suck. I mean, there's no other way around it. it you know, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. And when you get in it, it does at first. Um, you guys still on? I think everybody froze. Yeah. 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 We're on. Take cold showers. Um, and I, I just don't, uh, I find that the cold showers, it it is invigorating. You feel better when you get out, but it's one of those things getting it started is awful. Um, and just the, um, just the act of doing that, you know, on purpose, getting into something that you know is going to be awful. Um, I find makes you able to deal with other things that, you know, are going to be awful. Um, I tell my kids all the time. <clears throat> there's a saying that says something to the effect of a coward dies a thousand deaths deaths. And basically that just means the longer you put it off, it, it doesn't go away. You still have to do it. So um, for me, for mental toughness, it's just, just do it. Just get into it. By the time I tell my son this all the time, by the time you're into it, you're almost done anyway. So don't sit around and think about it. Just start doing it. Um, I love that. that. That's yeah. That's probably one of the, biggest things for me is just don't put it off. Don't be a procrastinator because it's not going to get easier. It gets, the more you think about it, the worse it gets. <laughs> now, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Yeah, this one was hard. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say my mountain bike for sure, but um, for actual training, it, and this is awful, but probably the Airdyne, um, nothing sucks more and nothing burns you out more and gets your heart going more and everything else I could do body weight. If I really had to, I could probably come up with ways body weight through handstands and things like that to do, to kind of mimic the other motions, but not much, not much mimics um, going all out on an airdyne or even just they're perfect for zone two. I mean, you can, you can literally just ride on that thing forever. Um, without the wear and tear on your feet and your knees and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, they are, they are. Dying. that's, I don't know about forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can ride it forever in zone two. I mean, literally when I have to do zone two stuff, if I'm having foot injuries, I can literally just, I'll be on my phone, just not even using the handles. I'll literally just be spinning it with my leg. And I don't know if that's because of my cycling background or what, but I, I don't find it to be very difficult, <clears throat> but it is beneficial. So since you are just now assembling your gym, what would be, what's at the top of your wish list to add? Rower. I definitely want a rower. <laughs> All the cardio stuff. I miss rowing a lot. Um, I think, I think that will be it. Um, I have, a, I finally, Rogue finally got some kettlebells in stock. So for Father's Day, I have a 26 and a 44 coming. Um, and, I have my homemade 35 that I made out of a protein jug and some concrete. Um, so at some point when 35s are back, I'll probably get another one, but, um, but yeah, a rower, uh, I would like a rower for sure. Now, a lot of garage gym athletes out there listening to this, what would your best advice for them be? I think I'm stuck. best advice for other gym athletes, garage gym athletes. Um, so, um, I had a couple, uh, one kind of adage that I always think of is, um, and it's funny that you mentioned Theodore Roosevelt in your book. Um, he has a saying that is 
comparison is the thief of joy. Um, and it's, I find it to be extremely true. Um, the moment I get online and start looking at Instagram and all these cool videos and all these things that young people are doing, I'm in my forties and I'm feeling it. Um, I start kind of, it kind of makes you put you in a mindset of less than, you know, I don't feel like I'm as, as good or I just don't feel as valid because I'm comparison myself, comparing myself to other people. So for me, it's, um, trying not to compare myself, knowing that everyone has their, uh, pros and cons and their strengths and their challenges, uh, and just being happy with where I am. Um, the other thing that I, uh, use that I got from my wife, she's a, she is a direct, was a director with Mary Kay for 15 years. Um, and she still is part of Mary Kay, but, uh, it's have a why, why are you doing what you're doing? <clears throat> so, you know, kind of what's your purpose? Why are you doing, why are you working out? Um, it can't just be for, I want to look good in my bathing suit. I mean, it can for short term, but for the long term, like my, my why is I want to be able to interact with my grandkids in my sixties. I want to be able to get on a boogie board and go swimming in the water with my kids. Now I want to be able to go hiking with them. I want to, it's, so it's a quality of life thing for me. It's never really been about um, how much can I lift? How fast can I run? For me, it's really about um, going back to you, Jared, being sustainable. I want to be sustainable <clears throat> over the long haul. I don't want to have like um, my mom is getting knee replacements and hip replacements. And I, I don't want that to be me. I want my stuff to be so in, in shape that I can be able to, for the long haul, be active um, because it's been such a big part of my life. So um, try not to compare myself to other people and try to have a why, you know, why, why I do what I do. That's awesome. That's awesome, Brian. I, I really appreciate that. And appreciate you being a garage gym athlete and, and spending time with us today. Um, and man, I would love to catch up with you when you get a little bit further into the Murph project, uh, maybe closer to the end or middle or something like that. And then get an update and do another, uh, <laughs> another podcast if you're open to it, man. But, uh, thanks for being around and, sure. and thanks for uh, your time. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.